Hello, this is Michael Wojak with a Rochester City Council update for September 19th, or technically September 19th and September 20th, 2016. Um, tired, long meeting ahead, knew it was going to be difficult, knew it was going to be a long one, and at the end of the day, there's a uh, you know, maybe the only thing worse than um, disappointing many of your friends is um, maybe um, not disappointing them, but doing what you don't believe is the right decision. And um, that was certainly in play tonight. And I, you know, it was interesting to go through the testimony looking for things that were going to sway my decision one way or another. And, um, you know, the the facts and the data were just pretty clear in this case what the right decision was and I still have some concerns but um, uh, spoiler alert the lattice is moving on to a final hearing a month or two from now um, bear with me on some of the other less interesting stuff committee the whole meeting was focused on um, city taxes budget uh, bottom line is is um, we're looking at a pretty substantial um, increase in the tax levy to even keep things consistent right now. It's the complication of um, underfunding things and growing beyond our means for some period of time. We haven't focused on sustainability and it's, it's catching up with us. The good news is is that the um, property valuation of the city is up a little over 9%. So hypothetically, um, a 12% a um, increase in the levy you know, is going to affect somebody whose um, property values are constant, about, um, about 3%. So that's just a little bit of perspective that the number that comes out whenever we decided it next week is probably going to be a lot um, bigger than um, th than what people will actually feel on the residential property taxes. Conversely, um, you know, business property taxes. If you're in a place that's seeing um, some rapidly appreciation appreciating tax values, that um, you're you're, you're going to get walloped pretty good potentially, and um, growth is probably the best thing. Um, smart growth is probably the best thing that's going to address this in the long run. But we truly are facing the consequences of some poor long-term planning and decisions. Um, transit planning. Uh, we did. I did bring this up a little bit that um, I've been working with uh, Julie Workman and some folks at the school district, and we're going to uh, bring back a contract um, to vote on in, uh, the next meeting to. Um, possibly take a look at using city buses to share the load with the schools a little bit to uh, more efficiently use our resources but to enable middle school and high school kids to potentially have a later start time which is something the data suggests is critically important to them. Um, the parking lot moratorium that I pushed for um, R3 and R4 districts which largely affect the core neighborhoods this is where they were tearing homes down and turning them into surface parking lots. There's now a one-year moratorium on that and we've initiated staff work to uh, come up with some policies for that. We all know the surface parking lots in core neighborhoods are bad. They've been bad for a long time. Well now we have an official moratorium. Quick trip up in the uh, northeast is a um, uh, basically I think we kind of punted on the decision um, for the most part, but um, we'll, we'll be coming back to us in October and um, with some additional conditions that looks like it's probably likely to pass, but we did continue the hearing, so there'll be more testimony. Um, billboard on 40, 41st Street um, did pass, uh, split vote again. I, I, I can see it both ways. Um, I'd be, if I lived in that special district up there, I would just be mad at the continual degradation that the city council has done to what was once a special district, but um, it speaks to our larger planning issues of, as a community. So let's let's go on to discuss Lattice. Um, you know, at, at, at the end of the day, um, we have a series of criteria that need to be met, and um, I was quite confident based on staff's requests um, by the time the hearing was done with, every single piece of criteria had been met with the exception of some view shed stuff that I'm looking for some more information on, but it's a, it's a concerning um, notion altogether because there certainly is going to take away the vista from some residents. I think it would be foolish to state otherwise, but um, I, the, Staff seemed to reason that it was um, what was being done here was reasonable and, and met the criteria, but I'm going to push them a little bit on that one. Traffic, you know, there's a lot of concern out there. Um, Public Works was quite convinced that they have all the appropriate mitigation to take care of things. And for me, from a personal standpoint, the fact that this is a building that's largely going to be attractive to people who don't want to drive a lot and the residential street 15th only takes in the um, 
only takes in the residential traffic, I think makes it a lot easier on the neighborhood. We have long-term issues on 6th Street and 2nd Street, and they have to be resolved. Um, and I'm really excited for this uh, St. Mary's Place public realm discussion that's going to be coming up because I think this is going to focus on some of the bigger picture items that were held against this project, but really are um, really dependent on the entire corridor. we got to fix that whole stretch there. There's a lot of um, issues, and um, it's kind of that last leg of 2nd Street, and I really want to make it safe, especially for the most vulnerable users, um, pedestrians and um, cyclists. Yeah, and there are a lot of pedestrians in that area, and there's really no safe crossings of 2nd Street at all these days, and um, so we need to do better for that. You know, a lot of um, some of the other concerns that came up, I thought some of them are, are very valid, and, and the reality is, is that um, this is not a project that's all things to all people. I think it's best um, probably for the long-term interests of Rochester, but it's not best for everybody in Rochester by any means. Um, one of the things that surprised me, and I really dug in hard, I challenged staff on this because when I read it, I didn't believe it, but the floor area ratio, which roughly equates to the average height of the project on the site for this 13-story um, monstrosity, as it was described, the average height is actually three and a half stories, and it is just really hard to wrap around what the density really is on that thing, and what it is is that all of that density is so heavily focused towards the intersection of 2nd Street and 14th that there's large setbacks, larger setbacks on all sides. There's, um, you know, the stuff that goes into the neighborhood is three stories or less. Um, so when you, when you average it all out on the site, believe it or not, and um, again, I challenge staff on this, the average height of the building is like three and a half stories. I'm still struggling to wrap my my hands are on this. I think I'm going to have to get some Legos and kind of lay it out and stack them up and see how this thing how this thing actually works. But it's um, it is perplexing. And, and what it comes down to is the density of this building is not nearly um, as as extreme as it I think it seems when you hear 13 stories. And also, you know, the general compatibility, the stuff that's facing the neighborhood is roughly the same height as the stuff in the neighborhood. The architectural style is a little bit different, but it's a, it's a qual it's quality materials and quality architecture that they're doing. And then the, the tower is tall, but it's, you know, I, I think it's a story or two short, shorter than the uh, helipad on the other side of the street and some of the new um, Mayo um, construction that's going up. So these are some, um, the, the, these are some issues and, um, you know, it was certainly very difficult because a lot of uh, people in that neighborhood who have been friends of mine for a long time were pretty passionately against this. I do think there was a little bit of um, last minute games. I, I felt I was, you know, I felt a little bit of um, pushing just to not be involved or to walk away from it. And, um, you know, based on the correspondence that I've had with neighbors and the, um, you know, the, just the number of people I've reached out to and tried to get involved in this process, um, because I don't have any conflicts of interest on this process and I'm not married to a result one way or the other. It was, it was important for me to, um, you know, provide some context and some background on this. I was a little bit surprised that it was a 4-3 vote and, um, I still have to understand where some other folks are coming from and I struggle. Mark Bilderback, as it turns out, he just had a couple questions that weren't sufficiently answered for him. And upon the receipt of those questions, I mean, he is, he, he's supportive of this too, is, is what it sounds like. Um, I, I'm looking forward to um, when this comes back in the final. I, I put some questions out there too. I think that's important. I do think that this thing got complicated and a little bit um, nasty because of some misinformation and some false statements that keep getting said again and again and again. You know, one had to do with the uh, collaboration with the neighborhood, and there was a pretty open invite for everyone to be part of the process. And it turned out the people that chose to be part of the process were not representative of the people who were the most vocal at the end. I get that. It's an issue. It's an issue with planning and neighborhood structure here. The guidelines. A lot of pe people said that the guidelines said that things can only be six stories, and that is explicitly not what they said, particularly the DMC guidelines. They um, specifically expect taller buildings to be proposed in other areas that are not the tall building zone downtown, and they reference the restrictor incentive development process to um, undergo that. Now, I want to get some more information on that. What exactly is the criteria for when this is appropriate and when it's not? Um, I had to rely on staff and some of the people in the architecture field here in the city of Rochester. And um, in the end, I mean, there was some passionate opposition to this project, but, you know, I, I think it's kind of a who's who also of uh, who's uh, supporting this project. Um, local architect involved with the uh, Heart of the City uh, process, um, former architect that lived very close to the project there, um, 
uh, the longtime neighborhood association president of Falwell, the uh, neighborhood board of um, the historic Southwest, the uh, neighborhood board of um, Kutsky Park, uh, Imagine Kutsky, Andy Masterpole, who's one of the most um, meticulous um, demanding folks when it comes to urban design. So there were a lot of folks on, on the support side of this as well, but you know, and people who have cared about this community and people who have lived in that neighborhood for a long time to see that passionate opposition and not be able to in good conscience give them the vote that they really want, it's it's still hard. Even after doing this for eight years, that, that's really hard. But um, I'm fairly confident that this is the right decision. I think there were some good questions that were asked and um, I think we're going to get some additional feedback and some answers. I'm looking for some additional data to further verify that the things that I believed were the case for this development are in fact true. And we're going to be able to parse out information on the finances and the need for that height based on their uh, TIF application. Um, even if I can't get the uh, University of Minnesota Design Center to weigh in on this, I'm still quite concerned about, um, I, I'm still very concerned about the prognosis of trying to get this, um, somebody who has urban design skills to give us some independent readout. It's something the Stantec report really called on that was the um, missing in our planning department was these urban design skills. And, um, you know, so some of these other folks I'm relying on, but I'd really like to uh, have some explicit guidance from uh, the University of Minnesota Design Center on our DMC guidelines for what should a taller building than six stories look like, because that's still a little bit of a enigma for me. Um, I think the other part of this is um, if we're going to protect the neighborhood in the long run, it takes a neighborhood level plan. Another thing that the um, I've been advocating for for eight years um, and um, the Stantec report nailed it, that you need to have um, interaction between the neighborhoods and planning. You need to establish neighborhood level plans. This one really is pretty similar to what was out there already. Um, ultimately, this took two more homes than what was already slated for redevelopment according to the, um, uh, the official map 19, which is the future layout of that area. Official map 19 is unanimously approved by the city council with neighborhood support back when it was done. It will happen. Um, the question is when, and I, I, I really hope that actually between now and the final public hearing that some of the St. Mary's Place public realm discussion that's going on, we're actually going to answer some of those questions about when do these improvements that benefit the neighborhood, when are they going to happen? It'll take a, you know two or three projects probably to help pay for them to make it happen, but we're talking about a future that has additional green space for the neighborhood, much higher quality um, development, uh, much safer street network, and for everyone on 2nd Street, safer crossings for pedestrians. We almost lost them. Uh, a senior couple who was crossing in a crosswalk with a light. Um, we have a number of people that have been, um, you know, seriously injured and killed on bicycles or cars just in the last year alone. And um, this is an opportunity to make this area a lot safer. I'm also excited about the prospect of potentially um, creating a greenway that runs from the front door of St. Mary's to Kutsky Park and our, um, and our trail system. I think that would be an incredible neighborhood amenity. I, I know that when something like this goes down, neighbors feel like they're losing everything and they're not gaining anything. But um, as I stood there today looking at that corner of 14th and 2nd Street and just how awful that area has truly looked. I mean, the Brentwood's got a little bit of money put in it, but that's a very dated building. But just going up 14th, the overhead power lines and the um, the complete mess that is the um, empty lots and the homes that have been let go for far too long. Mayo Clinic is an absolutely fantastic medical association, but their history as a landlord in that neighborhood has been very challenged at best. Um, this is an opportunity to take the most blighted part of that neighborhood and take it in, um, turn it into a very high value per square foot cost. So um, I know a lot of folks are disappointed. I know that there are other folks that are happy with the decision. Um, I think there's still a little bit more understanding before this can be final. I think there are questions that have to be asked, but um, at the end of the day, um, you know, I it was very tempting to either cop out, not take a leadership role. It was very tempting to just try and do what would make the most people happy. But I truly believe that this is what's going to be best for the future of the neighborhood, for the future of that corridor, for the future of um, public safety as, as well in that area. So, you know, I um, you know, to those of you that are hurt by this decision, I, I apologize, you know, and I, I, I'll just say it again, I, I don't 
personally benefit from this stuff anyways. I go through a lot of pain when I make these decisions, but um, for those of you that have um, helped me through the process, thank you very much. I'll catch you next time.